no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Coming up here on today's show, I'm going to be breaking down 10 offensive linemen that I believe the Las Vegas Raiders need to go out and sign because, let's face it, the O-line right now is like watching Grandma get out of the tub ugly. So let me know down in the comments section before I break down the top five right tackles and the top five offensive guards that I want the Las Vegas Raiders to go out and get. Let me know why for yes and for no should the Raiders sign an offensive lineman. And there's no wrong answers here because everybody deserves their two cents. But if you are going to go ahead and type that Y for yes, maybe give me some players before you see who I suggest, who you think we should go out and get. The reason why I'm going to go ahead and type my Y for yes is simply because I think you got to be better up front. When you look at how this team has played thus far, the only weakness has been the offensive line, especially the offensive guard position. And I'm hoping Alex Otherwood is healthy. However, he is battling some injuries right now. Now, the reason why I'm going to show you all the Raiders offensive line depth chart is because when I thought about making this video, and realistically, I had the whole thing built, the Raiders didn't have a backup to Leatherwood. They went out and signed Barton, who we're about to talk about here in a second. But if you want to talk about bad offensive lines, and I hate saying this because I was very confident about this team, here's what the Raiders' offensive line has looked like thus far according to PFF. If you want to talk about grades, luckily Colton Miller has got a pulse. 70.4, that's 14 out of 74. So the number that you see right underneath them is how many tackles or how many guards are in the league and where they rank among that position. John Simpson, he's been the 65th best at a 68 offensive lineman, a 43.4 grade. Andre James, 31 out of 33, not a good grade. Jermaine Illuminor, Alex Leatherwood. I mean, with the fact that we got three linemen on this team right now that have been the fourth worst essentially at their position is not something I'm very happy about. Now you also got some guys on the practice squad like Devery Hamilton, Jimmy Morrissey who they drafted in the seventh round, Jeremiah Patazzi as well. Potentially you could call up one of these guys. However, I don't really think that any of those players right there was a long-term option. I also don't think that Jackson Barton, who was previously on the Giants practice squad, is a long-term option. And if Alex Leatherwood is banged up with that back injury, if the Raiders are worried about that interior offensive line, then you need to go out and make another move. You need to be able to figure out something. So unless they sign one of these 10 players that I'm about to bring up, I believe that there's an option. The only player that you're not going to see that's going to be a very popular guy on this list is uh, Schwartz. And the reason is I just don't think that he's healthy, and the Raiders need All some right. people out there that are actually healthy at the tackle position. Let's go to number five here on my list. I got Jared Jones-Smith. The reason why he's on this list is exactly why I talked about Kyle Slaughter last week. Previously on the Raiders, they have a connection with him. Now, before I made this video, he was a free agent. And then right before I started filming, he signed to the Baltimore Ravens practice squad. So if the Raiders still want to be able to go out and get him, they still can do so. I thought he looked halfway decent in 2020. When I say halfway decent, I mean like halfway decent for Jared Jones Smith. But he was bad in the 2021 preseason. But Tom Cable, what does he like? He likes big offensive linemen that got that length. And that's exactly what Jones Smith has got. He's 6'7". So it's just a player to keep in mind. And I am ranking these from 5 all the way down to 1. We'll go through the tackles quick. And then we'll get to the offensive guards as well. At number 4, David Sharp. Guess what? David Sharp also recently just signed with the Baltimore Ravens practice squad. The other reason why Sharp's on this list, he's got the connection with Gruden. He's got the connection with the Las Vegas Raiders. So Sharp played 178 snaps at right tackle last season. He was also with Las Vegas from 2017 to 2019. I must be boring because I got Peterson back here yawning on me. Let me know how I'm doing so far in the video. If you like what I got, hey, like the vid. Overall grade of 50.9. Overall pass blocking grade of 57.4 last year. And then that run blocking grade of 51.5. At number three, coming up here on the Raiders report in terms of some offensive tackles the team could go out and get, I got Roderick Johnson. Yes, Roderick Johnson. This guy is actually a free agent. So and the reason why I'm going to go out and say this dude is because played 28 games the past two years so been a little bit healthier also versatility 163 snaps at left tackle the 66 snaps at right tackle the pass blocking grade okay at 60.6 better run blocker and I think that's really what Gruden wants he wants his right tackle to be able to run block a little bit better 73.9 the overall grade 64.5 at number two 
We're going to go to the guy who was drafted in the first round in 2009, an old veteran, DeMar Dotson. And when he's healthy, this guy can be very good. And I know that he's been good in the past as well. He's been battling some issues of late. Played in eight games last season with the Denver Donkeys. Dotson did play 451 snaps at the right tackle position. When he was on the field, he was good. 70.8 overall grade, 70.0 pass blocking grade. And then one number right underneath from being really nice as a run blocking grade. So as I said earlier, I don't have Mitchell Schwartz on this list just because I don't think he's healthy. If he is healthy, if there's news that come out that he is, I would actually probably go ahead and put him number one or number two on this list. But before I break down who the number one right tackle that the Raiders could potentially go out and get is, if Alex Leatherwood is in fact hurt, I want you to name a free agent on the offensive tackle position that you believe that the Raiders should go out and sign. At number one, it's Rick Wagner. And if you guys follow me in the offseason, this probably shouldn't surprise you all that much. I was actually very impressed with Wagner last season with the Green Bay Packers and kind of surprised that they didn't decide to bring him back. He played in 578 snaps at the right tackle position. Overall started, I believe, in 13 games, played in all 16. But the overall grade there of 77.0, pass blocking grade of 78.1, and then the run blocking grade of 69.3. I believe the best offensive tackle that is healthy. Rick Wagner is healthier than Mitchell Schwartz. I can promise you that out there on the market right now is, in fact, Wagner. Now, if you guys want to go ahead and bet on the Raiders this year, you can go ahead and do so at chatsports.com slash Raiders. Promo code Raiders125. It gets you that 125% deposit bonus. Now, for anybody out there that wonders what the hell does that mean, it means if you deposit $100 at chatsports.com slash Raiders, you're going to get $125 for free to bet with. Now, if you're wondering, Mitch, what are some of the bets that you're making this week? Here are my week three bets. I'm taking the under and the Saints and Patriots game. Both of those offenses and both those defenses, I think, have been playing pretty well. The Chargers and KC, anytime the Chiefs play, I'm taking the over. Washington, plus 10 up against Buffalo. I think Washington loses, but I don't think they lose that bad. I got Seattle minus one. I believe this odd now is minus two up against the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota. And then the Raiders minus four against Miami. I don't care if it's Jacoby Brissett. I don't care if it's Tua Tungavailoa. The Raiders are winning that game by more than four. So we talked about the offensive tackles. Now it's time to take a deep dive into the offensive guard position, which I think is the more glaring issue for this silver and black team. I got J.R. Sweezy up there. And this actually, I feel like I'm almost a little bit too low on him. He played 13 games last season for Aaron. Arizona played 35 snaps at left guard 607 at right guard so if you want to be able to find somebody that could fill in for Jermaine Illuminor also Illuminor has experience playing tackle maybe they could do that 52.5 overall grade this is more of a, you're just looking for an extra body. Think of him as somebody like a Nick martin S type of player. Let's go to number four on my list here, Coleccio Semele. If he was 100% healthy, he would be a lot higher on this list. I've always been a big fan of Kelechi. Now, last season, he ended up hurting, I believe it was, what, his Achilles in week five against the Raiders. Missed a lot of time. He played 282 snaps, though, at left guard. One of the best in the biz when he's healthy. He is just getting a little bit older right now, but could be a name to at least keep in mind. At number three, probably Probably everybody wants to see David DeCastro a little bit higher on this list, but it's very similar to what I said about Schwartz as well. He's not healthy. He's already contemplated retirement. They ended up cutting him for Trey Turner. Also, F. Trey Turner for headbutting one of the Raiders players this uh, past week. But a 64.1 overall grade. There was a time where he was one of the best guards in the league. I get that he played 845 snaps last year, but his health, I do not believe, is 100% there. But if he is healthy, hey, it's at least got to pick up the phone and call. So name a free agent offensive guard that you think the Raiders should go out and sign. Let me know down in the comments section. Curious what you guys have to say. I'm going to guess it's going to be a lot of the names that I'm going to be putting here, though, at number one. But before we get to the first guy, let's go to Joe Dahl. And Joe Dahl brings versatility. If you're just talking about talent, David DeCastro is more talented. Clutch Assembly is more talented. Dahl might be more talented than J.R. Sweezy. But the reason why he's two on my list is because I'm worried about John Simpson. I'm worried about... Uh, Andre James, I'm worried about Illuminor and the fact that he played 112 snaps at left guard, 91 at center last year, and then 61 at right guard. He can play all over the place. That's kind of why you want him as a backup. And at number one, if you watch the show for a while, you'll know that I've been sitting here pounding the table and knock on wood if you're with me here, that I think the Raiders need to go out and get Nick Easton. And Nick Easton is the best guard on the market right now. 
He played 230 snaps at left guard. He played 332 snaps uh, last season as well. The overall grade, not all that great. He is a little bit better at run blocking, but again, you're talking about versatility. I can also rely on him playing more games, being healthy. That's why I want Nick Easton. He'd be the number one guy I personally would call. Maybe John Gruden watches this show and says, you know what? This guy's not too half bad. I'm going to go ahead and maybe take a word of his advice. But if you guys agree with me, please let me know down in the comments. Now, here's a special offer I got going on. If you guys want to go ahead and bet on some games with me, I want you to go ahead and message me on Instagram at MitchellRens365. So last week, my bosses might get mad at me for saying this, but if you message me on Instagram and give me some of your bets, because I do need a little bit of help. I think I did okay, but... I did a jersey giveaway thing last week, or like a, if you sign up with BetUS, you're also going to get a free jersey. All I'm saying is this. If you want to go ahead and bet with me, message me on Instagram, at MitchellRens365, because I did I did two and three last week. The overall rankings here, we're doing like a betting pool thing at Chat Sports. I'm at least tied for fifth. I was five and five. Tom Downey, you can see some of these other guys ahead of me. In fact, two of them are in the room with me right now, so uh, yep, F y'all. But uh, we got Jack Lottere, Jeremy Bleeds, RC, Maxfield, James Yoder, Chase Sr., some of these other guys. But if you guys want to bet with me, go to chatsports.com slash Raiders. Promo code Raiders125. Send me some of your bets. Send me some of your bets on Instagram. I'm at MitchellRens365. I want to see what you guys are thinking. So again, here are the top 10 offensive linemen that I believe the Las Vegas Raiders need to go out and get because the O-line scares me. And it's really is about as uh, simple as that. So here's the offensive guards and then the offensive tackles as well. I might reconsider and put Mitchell Schwartz on the list, but I got to be able to get more of an update on it because he's a talented player when a talented guy like Schwartz is still on the free agent market. That's just a glaring, glaring sign that he's just not 100% healthy.